had two beers and two shots throughout the night. This is back when I still drank. And I stepped outside to have a smoke, and the world went black. I (laughs) was struck by a locomotive. Uh, The train conductor said that he was going 45, 50 mile an hour around the bend, and he saw me laying on the tracks. He thought I was a mannequin, um, because apparently that's a prank that they play on rural Nebraskan tracks. Mm. Uh, Realized I wasn't a mannequin after he hit me, uh, slammed on the brakes, went to go and find me. Colorado. Yeah. Are you flew in for special for this or she was always out here? Um, it's my five year sobriety anniversary and so I just kinda wanted to take a vacation. Yeah, nice. yeah but I thought they they'd go the scalp. What she? The scalp. What? Just kidding. <laughs> 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 don't 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 listen just, to him. Just, <laughs> just, just ignore just him right now. Just ignore like the wall up here. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, <laughs> we're doing the playback and he's like <laughs> <laughs> he, he, okay. he wants he wants so bad for people to talk to the playback. So I pretend to move my lips while it's playing. Oh, back. okay. You know what I mean? And then you hear something, you know, and my lips don't match up. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck is he saying? You know why he does that? For like our first ten podcasts. Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Yeah, he for talked sure. to the <laughs> I would respond back. I, I'd be looking around <laughs> to the say, playback. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah do we have any of that shit i'd have to go in <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, we have so much so many hours of content yeah. like, it would be so funny i'm just gonna like pay send send, uh, send like it all to like somebody in um india yeah to just go smart through, they right? wouldn't get the references they wouldn't nah. <laughs> it'd just be funny man just do like bloopers from the very beginning because we, when we first started, we like thought we, we would only put like cool shit out. Yeah. <laughs> like only like if it was like cool and like. Or we thought it was cool. <laughs> right. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we think it's cool to like just put, because we have so much blooper reels now. Yeah. yeah. We like to laugh at ourselves. Don't miss out on that content. No. Yeah. No. So we put that Make out. Make somebody smile. You're more willing to bring them in. To yeah. What you're doing. That's the thing. Yeah. Dang. That's the thing. And we make it only for the subscription server. Yeah. So that, we <laughs> should throw a, <laughs> we should throw a few of those out to uh, the uh pub, the just general. teasers. Yeah. I'll tell you what So nice. what I've been doing is I put them on the story and then I put the and I put the I make the subscription thing really big so it covers our faces so you can't actually see what we look like. Oh you just can, you can hear what we're saying. Right. Yeah, I s yeah. Okay. Our all we, we the only reason why we have a subscription service is that um, we donate uh, the whole thing to uh, getting people into treatment. Yeah, there you go. You know what we should? No, you're not going to want to do it. Forget it. I'll do it. What? I'm going to go topless, and you're just going to blank <laughs> out my top. We, you already have me topless downstairs. So remember? in the we're going to so let's go that go let's go topless. Put a put and put it over, <laughs> saying if you want to see the censored version, join the subscription. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> Only fans. Yeah, bro. Let's do that. Me and Chad and cover our our. our oh, yeah. I got it. We'll change it to only addicts. Only addicts. There we go. And their family. And their families. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone else suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. Only addicts and their families. Yeah. And anybody else suffering. Yeah. Wow. So Mandy. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Mandy, that was the name of a song, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Don't An older it. one. You're going to bring up Barry Manilow. It was right Barry Manilow. That. That's right like just came to that. me because there was two, two Brandy and Mandy. Mm-hmm. There's also Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. How did the Mandy one go? Uh, I love Barry Manilow. I get it saying to me at least, you know, three or four times a week. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> you are so lucky. Absolutely. Wow, because you can't really. I mean, back in the day, Barry. Man, I mean, Barry Manilow was was the shit. Good looking. I have his old records. 
Everyone has his own with his hair and the wind yeah. like that, you know? It's so funny to think that he was good looking. Wasn't right? he? Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah. I guess. With his white like, pants on. I remember those albums. He would be on the top, on the cover. <laughs> you know? Like Fabio. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Is he still alive, Barry Manilow? Uh, if he is, he's like sure. very, 90, very old. Yeah. Right on. Sorry to interrupt. About um, you were inter- you were saying something, Mandy. You said, "Hey, Mandy," and then I bolted in there, lost your train of thought. I don't know what you were thinking though. She was about so don't to ask. Si- she was about to sing the Mandy song. Oh no, you're Mandy. Oh, no. I don't even know how it goes. You don't. We're well, here we go. To- oh, here we're gonna we're gonna pull it right up. Listen, <laughs> there's a good chance somebody's trying to hack your website right now. Really, my website? What? Let's get right to the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I realize how much I love you, Mandy. <laughs> Is that how it goes? <laughs> or did Shane just make that up right I now? I just okay. made it up. <laughs> he just made that up. It's great, though. Oh, Mandy. Close. <laughs> Me from crying. You know what? And I love you today, yo, Mandy. Look at Barry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. This is Barry Manilow, too. Great head of hair, great profile. Uh huh. He bit. was married to a supermodel, I think. I forget which one. No, that's, that? Rod, that's Rod Stewart. That's Rod Stewart. Rod You're right. Stewart, yeah. That's Rod. Yeah. I saw Rod in concert. Do you know Rod Stewart? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the only person I'm picturing is the the guy who does the podcast and has for several years i don't even i'm not Joe even sure Rogan? it's a podcast now he's got that i'm this thinking of stern oh howard, howard stern, stern. Howard, stern. Yeah. Yeah. howard stern yeah it kind of was i you know it, 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 what he did was kind of a podcast yeah he videoed it he, he was, did video he was it. live yeah yeah it was like the one of the first yeah, yeah. i would call that a po- i would yeah. now to in today's era i would call that a podcast 100 percent wolfman jack too the wolfman KR-55, yeah, baby. Come see the Wolfman, Jack. <laughs> oh, God. You, you never knew the Wolfman? You have a face for radio. God, I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't give me those eyes. <laughs> She's spicy. She's What are you going to do, kick not me? Fucking no. <laughs> no, well, if it was 40 years ago, maybe. But now I'm not allowed to. I mean, I'm believing fair fights. You want to go? I'll go. Arm wrestling. No, I'm good at arm wrestling. I am. I'm a good arm wrestler. You are? Yeah. How come we've never arm wrestled? Because we're over 50 and we don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> like, literally, why haven't we? Bro, it's like, like almost asking, why, why don't we wrestle? You want to wrestle? Right now. We should do it right now. You know what we, right could, we should do? Yeah. We should film us arm wrestling. Right now? Not right now. Because I don't want We to. should do it with Natalie's here and, and Jonathan want. and have her like a round robin. Get Callie in here. You know? Eat some watermelon. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm going to eat some watermelon. Just the whole tournament. <laughs> yeah. Whole, like a, like Spit a, seeds at each other. <laughs> hey. So I'm going back to Mandy because she is the reason why we are podcasting yeah. today. Mandy. Mandy. What's your full name? It's not Mandy. Yeah, it's no? Mandy Lucille Horvath. I knew it. Yeah. Mandy. See, it's Mandy Lucille. That's her middle name. Well, <sighs> it could have been Amanda. And then she just goes Mandy. Oh, yeah. I suppose. My name was supposed to be Amanda. See? See, I'm close. I'm on one today. I'm I'm mentally in tune. Yeah. Where'd you get the hat from? Uh, I got this hat from my lead producer of the documentaries that I filmed in 2021 when I climbed Kilimanjaro. Oh, nice. I think I'm fading in and out. Yeah. I need to get closer. Oh, my gosh. Almost kiss it. Yes. That's. Yeah, I do. That's, my, <laughs> yeah, I do. I know. I, I just, I, let's see. Does it sound funny? What does it sound like if I'm back here? It, it kind of has to do with your tone of voice. So if you don't talk consistently because you think like you're talking oh. loud, it'll fade out. Oh, okay. Well, so you don't want to. I will just like sit here it. and kind of scream at you. That yep. is <laughs> the best. Well, so you climbed Kilimanjaro. They did a bio- autobiography on that. Uh, she said documentary. documentary. Documentary, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. The illness crept in my memory. The the autobiography is in, in writing. 
progress right now. So nice. that's always are you writing, interesting. Are you writing an autobiography of your life? I am. I am. All my climbing adventures and kind of what occurred to land me in a wheelchair and yeah. the whole nine yards. So, yeah. Do you know where that statement comes from, the whole nine yards? I don't. Tell yeah, me. I, I, it's a fun fact. It's a Canadian statement. No, it's not. It's from, <laughs> it's, it's from the ship. The whole nine yards. I think there's nine yards. It's something to do with the Navy. I don't know exactly, though. <laughs> All right, I'm going to look it up. Give me the attitude. Continue talking. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> he, comes, he comes out with some facts that are like, he's like, do you know where that came from? And then we're like, no, we don't. And then he doesn't give us the information because he doesn't know it. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Uh, Got to learn somehow, I guess. Yeah. The bullets were the machine guns used in America, combat planes, World War II, since... Oh, never mind. Wrong thing. <laughs> the whole nine <laughs> yards. Oh, yeah. Linked belts of 350 to 400 rounds. The average length of such a belt being about nine yards. And it was thought that this may be the origin of the phrase. Interesting. So, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mandy... Coming back around. Yeah, yeah, finally. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We know nothing, nothing. except for that we follow you on Instagram <laughs> and yeah. we've been following you. Yeah. We don't follow a lot of people. You just popped up one day. I don't know. I don't remember. And we didn't have a lot of followers ourselves. And like we were like anytime, any anytime. Did you follow us? Yeah, I saw what you guys were kind of doing. And I'm obviously familiar with the recovery world and liked what you were doing. So I gave you a follow. Did you follow us first? Or did we follow you first? I think I followed you first. I think I was sharing your content to my stories. Mm. Yeah. Nice. So. I don't How old are you? I am 30 years old. 30? Yeah. Nice. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. 29 was weird. I look back at younger versions of myself and I feel such pity. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like that. Wow. I feel pity on my on all the younger versions of myself. Even my thirties, man. I'm like, I was. If I if I had this brain that I have now at thirty, at 30 yeah, I would have no. been cru- I would have crushed life already. I'm a slow learner. Yeah, I yeah. am too. I think that most addicts are really until you get in there and you actually see what it's about and find that recovery can do well for yourself. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Missouri. <laughs> I am a product of two truck drivers. My name is Mandy Horvath. Wow. Yeah, I got a whole other accent for back home. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like <laughs> so it. I don't feel too out of place there. So, um, I grew up, in, like I said, in Missouri, doing a lot of hunting and fishing and spending a lot of time in the outdoors. It was my solace from, you know, home life and school life and everything else and yeah I was um I had just turned 21 and I went out with some people that I thought I could trust and we went to a little bar in Steel City Nebraska and I had two beers and two shots throughout the night this is back when I still drank and I stepped outside to have a smoke and the world went black (laughs) I <laughs> was struck by a locomotive. Uh, the train conductor said that he was going 45, 50 mile an hour around the bend, and he saw me laying on the tracks. He thought I was a mannequin, because um, apparently that's a prank that they play on rural Nebraskan tracks. Mm. Uh, realized I wasn't a mannequin after he hit me, uh, slammed on the brakes, went to go and find me, and as he stepped down out of the train, that's whenever he received a tap on his shoulder. And his flashlight turned and illuminated the face of my date of that night. Of your what? My date that night. The guy I was with. Mm. And um, train conductor was obviously startled. He just hit somebody and stepped down out of this train whenever he received this tap on his shoulder. And uh, he goes, hey, man, why did you stop? And train conductor goes, I think I hit somebody. I don't have time for this. And my date goes, I hope it's not Mandy. A um, lot of time in between there, a lot of investigation, a lot of um, 
really rough healing time. But uh, it's suspected that I was incapacitated by a date rape drug that night. And when the train hit me, it took my legs. So I, um, <clears throat> like I said, I went through a really rough time with recovery. I was almost healed. And then my bones started regrowing. My body started regenerating my own legs. It was um now looking back on it, I can look at it and think like, wow, that was remarkable science-wise because I was a patient of A-cell stem cell, which is dried pig's bladder um, mixed up with A-cell stem cells. And so what they do is every Tuesday and Friday, they put me down for debridement surgery and um, they go in and take off the decoded tissue and apply this A-cell stem cell. And this happened every Tuesday and Friday every, every week um, for almost a year. But um, when I was first hit, uh, there were holes in my legs that you could stick three fingers up and touch my bone. <coughs> and so I think that the A-cell, sim cell um, attached to my bone, and that's what regenerated the bone growth because it was meant to regenerate tissue, muscle, skin, and it just so happened to work for bone too. So it's a... Uh, really incredible. This is what they were using on the gentleman that would come back from Afghanistan and Iraq that had been blown up as well. I had a fantastic surgeon who was um, a veteran himself for the Air Force, and I, I don't know that I would have gotten through that without the right team of people. So, um, not long after getting out of the hospital, I was already up and walking in prosthetics because that was something that was a goal of mine is just to get back up on some kind of feet. Mm -hmm. It's obviously quite a bit different than your actual joints, and so it was quite the learning curve. Um, but I moved out to Colorado uh, in 2016, and the first night that I was there, I got driven up uh, Austin Bluffs. It's this beautiful street that goes through Colorado Springs. And I saw this college on the right side of the highway. And uh, that was University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And I decided that night that I was going to go to college there and I was going to graduate from there. And we'll make that a reality this May. I'm very excited for that. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's been wild. <laughs> But uh, I was living out in Colorado, and I got tired of seeing everybody else's pictures out in the woods and, you know, out in nature where I was most comfortable. And so I just decided, <coughs> excuse me, I just decided one day that I was going to go and climb the incline, the Manitou Incline. And for those that are unfamiliar, the Manitou Incline is <laughs> a around 3,000 step uh, <laughs> staircase just implanted right into the side of a mountainside. Uh, it used to be the old Cog Railway. And um, <coughs> interestingly enough, it's made of railroad ties. Mm. And um, the first time that I did the incline, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I, I had no idea that it was going to take off the way that it did. Um, I was trying to save my own life. I was still very much in the throes of alcoholism at this point in my life. And um, I, I knew I had to get out and do something to, to save my life. So I did. And got to the top that night. Um, went with a Marine veteran and uh, an older gentleman that I knew from a bar. And um, <coughs> I got home that night. I didn't upload anything. I just, I mean, I didn't even take a shower. I just crawled into bed and went to sleep. The next day I uploaded photos of it, and it went international within 24 hours. I had the BBC and every media outlet between Colorado Springs and Denver contact me. It was wild. <laughs> um, and from there, I decided that if I could do the Manitou Incline, <laughs> I could somehow make it to the top of Pikes Peak. 
And um, <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with the trail up to Pikes Peak, it's 13 miles starting from the base of the incline. Uh, it's it's one of the harder trails, but easier trails if you have limbs. <laughs> right. The length of it is what's really interesting. So that next month I set out to, <coughs> and I didn't train anything. I was so, <laughs> I look at younger versions of myself, like I said, in, in pity. And I'm like, wow, what were you, what were you doing to your poor body? <laughs> <laughs> Like, you made it one mile up the incline, which is, like, 72% grade in some spots. Mm. It's, uh, it's intense. It's where a lot of the local military go to train. And um, so <laughs> decided to go up and... <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's water. That would be fantastic. Yeah. That's what you have an engineer for. Don't say anything. I know. Don't say, really into it. <laughs> don't say it. What did you do? Did you push to push the unrecord button? No. Oh. I have my mic muted so you don't hear me eating my cookie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what what did kind I of do? cookie? Believe it or not, AM PM peanut butter cookie. Oh, fancy. He really likes those. For a dollar I get three of these? Man, they're they're pretty good. For a dollar, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Where did you get these? Cold waters from Dr. Aquino. Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah. You ready, Shane? Yeah. We're back. So Seventy-two on. degrees. I had a friend that does Pikes Peak uh, drifting. Reese Miller. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. he does uh, drifting. That's really Up awesome. Pikes Peak. He holds the record. One of the records. What's drifting? It's peaks. Peaks goes in circles. And it's a famous drifting course. I mean, you it's fall so off. So the Pikes Peak Highway. Yeah, they it's They have the international um, Pikes Peak races. Yeah. Oh. Wow. It's pretty intense. It's, it's a fantastic event. Yeah. Too. It's ran by some really incredible people. After climbing Pikes Peak, I got to wave the flag up there for the yeah. uh, Ducati bikes. It was awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's called the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. So I think it's it's not a drifting event. It's who can get up the, the fastest. Yeah, who can get up the fastest. That's right. There was oh, yeah. a, the motorcycle is going to win. There's a one guy that went off the cliff. Yeah, well, there's a few guys go off the cliff. I that's don't think that they do I've motorcycles watched. anymore. Yeah. because Dangerous. They went off the cliff. Yeah, somebody lost their life yeah. a couple years back. So, yeah. Where is Pikes Peak? Pikes Peak is in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay. Yeah. It's beautiful. It looms over the city. And so. Do you know where Aurora, Colorado is? I do. Yeah. You do? Yeah. It's just right outside of Denver. My daughter's name is Aurora. A suburb of Denver, I guess. A suburb. It's a pretty name. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I went and did Pikes Peak. I, <laughs> I still don't know how I made that first climb. Uh, 13 miles on my arms. Didn't train at all. I was, I had to have my, um, my friend Daniel who, did the climb with me. I had to have him go hang a bear bag of wine because I didn't want to go through withdrawals while I was on the mountain. So he went up and he hung a bear bag of wine for me and ended up safely summiting somehow. Um, but it wasn't long after that climb that I got myself into a world of trouble, which I'm coming up on the five year anniversary of my sobriety. Um, but I also <laughs> am coming up on the five-year, well, I just passed the five-year anniversary of landing myself in a CJC jail cell. Yeah. <coughs> so um, I, I was not at all um, hiding my addiction. I mean, I was pretty open. Anytime that you see me, uh, if you go back to early interviews, even you can hear me slurring my words. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just got done climbing a mountain and I'm down at the bottom of this mountain slurring my words because yeah. I'm already drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. But um, I ended up getting into a lot of trouble. I had uh, acquired three DUIs within a six month period 
right there in Colorado Springs. And the third one, for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to try to beat up the EMT that was trying to help me. Um, And so I managed to land myself an assault charge on top of that. Uh, It was arguably one of the darkest times of my life. I mean, obviously going through amputation and recovery was really hard, but um, that first stint was really difficult for me uh, because I went from, you know, the community hero to the community zero overnight. Yeah. And everybody that I was climbing for or working with unfortunately had to report on my arrest as well. And so it was very embarrassing, very shameful. Um, But in the best way I can put it, the biggest wake up call and it worked (laughs) because I'm still sober. So, yeah, yeah. I got very fortunate to um, link up with some people in AA and I met my uh, sponsor at the time, Rockin' Robin. She's this, uh, (laughs) <laughs> retired detective for the Colorado Sp- Colorado Springs Police Department and um she uh, she really guided me into what a healthy life and sobriety would look like and I had other influences like Johnny Joy with radio out there and 1073 Mountain Country and I was very fortunate um I really did though for a long time think that like man, like you, you almost had it, but now your life's over. But, (laughs) um, if, if I've learned anything over the last several years in climbing and in life in general, it's that, um, pain and struggle is temporary. And I've had, unfortunately, (coughs) lost close to 30 people. Uh, just in the last five years, to either suicide or uh, overdose. And um, we need to really have discussions about making permanent decisions over temporary pain. Yeah. Because uh, I can't imagine how different my life would be if I hadn't have been changing or trying to chase that temporary numbness um, just just to get away from the temporary pain of getting sober. So, I don't know. It's been wild. It's been wild. And so, I ended up spending most of the summer of 2019 in jail and then a week after I got out of jail, I decided that I was going to go do that mountain again. And so I took fellow bilateral amputee Travis Strong, and he's a Army veteran. <coughs> Try not to get emotional today because I don't want to sit here and cry all day. You can. <laughs> we don't mind. I cry on the podcast often. Right, Shane? Yeah. Yeah. Um, (coughs) So Travis Strong is a fellow bilateral amputee and Army veteran and decided to do the climb with him. And we made it up successfully. We had a great team. We had videographer Jill Bolibol and Rucker Nicholas Hallisey and Robert Greiner, who stepped in and kind of was our angel fairy of the, <laughs> the trip. It was <coughs> uh, it was a remarkable experience. And I'm glad that I went back to do it in sobriety. I got my one-year chip up on the top of Pikes Peak, mm. and uh, that was very important to me. And um, not long after that, decided to go and try for the Statue of Liberty. So I <laughs> went and climbed up the Statue of Liberty for Cars for Heroes, which is I, what I do is I normally climb and then dedicate the climb to a charity because I don't, I 
don't really need the attention, but I know that a lot of charities out there do. Yeah. And um, so I did the Statue of Liberty. Um, that was just a remarkable experience. I had just gotten out of jail a week before, so this limbless woman is the first one here in recorded history to climb up the stairwell. You know, that was just, I don't know, kind of ironic for me. It's pretty <laughs> dope, though. It was. Yeah. It was an awesome experience. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've seen the Statue of Liberty, but what I did um, do is I climbed the stairways of the Capitol building. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah. One of these days, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You should do that one. Maybe. It's pretty cool. I'd like to go out to D.C. and do kind of something like that. I don't know. They're all, they're all jerks up there in DC. <laughs> <laughs> Liars. <laughs> <laughs> Both it's sides. A, it's a different. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I don't make it political. <laughs> Me either. You know? I don't. I don't like to let people know what I think because that just seems well, to paint a target on your back. Yeah, and it divide it divides people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, especially uh, now. Yeah, and I, well, we're the, uh, this podcast with this podcast. We're trying to bring people back together, you know. Uh, obviously, like we uh, we we have our own views, but I don't really care what anybody else's views are. I, and <laughs> that actually sounded yeah, really it kind horrible. Of did. Huh? We did a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. We do care. I, mean, what I, I do care what they that what they think and what they believe, and I respect it. Yeah, we just don't let it in. Yeah, yeah. No I, place, I, I no place for arguing here. No, no. Not at all. No, we're bipartisan. Yeah, because it's like, like uh, the issue that we're fighting is fentanyl, right? The fentanyl crisis. We're fighting addiction, mental health. We're fighting yeah. mental health, um, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't discriminate in any way, shape, no. or form. No. Nor does Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, and um, it's a, it's a group of people that can come together for and and fight a common cause. Yeah, it should be. I mean. Not everybody lands in that specific um, mental space. Mental space, yeah. non-judgmental. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I found that a lot of people in recovery. Um, something that my sponsor told me early on that I I will take to the grave with me is if you're focusing too much on somebody else's recovery, what's wrong with your own? Yeah, you know. Um, true. And I found that to be true for myself anytime that I was looking at somebody else saying like hey man you need to like do this like what's going on in my life that I need to fix what's on my side of the street that I need to worry about and um, unfortunately I think that there is a, a large group of people in the sobriety community that really believe that if you don't do it their way like you're oh, not yeah. going to make it oh yeah like you're not going to make it Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's it's unfortunate because there's so many lives that you can save just by being a little more accepting, just a little tiny bit more open minded. And they, yeah. you know, you know, we pre- uh, they, they, we, they, we, they preach uh, open mindedness, mm-hmm. but it's a closed mind if you think that Alcoholics Anonymous is the absolute and only way, way yeah, to change your life no it's part of it it can be i mean it's a great no don't get me wrong it's a great program and it's a 80 some years strong and has proven track record of getting people uh clean and sober and and uh and showing them a new way of life it says sometimes there's some old timers in there but then it's again like what you said uh if they're focusing on other people's recovery yeah yeah you know i'm all about mindset like I'm, i'm all about your mindset, mm-hmm. you know, and having a strong, uh, positive, motivating mindset. Yeah. Mindset's really everything, you know. A lot of people would ask me, like, how have you done this without any training? And I, I've been honest, uh, it's it's more mental than it is anything. Yeah. Your body's incredible. It can heal. It can push you through some things that you, you wouldn't even be able to comprehend at th- this state but um yeah it's all mindset it really is you just gotta whoopsie uh-oh whoopsie was that me no okay
appreciate it. Man. You could have just <laughs> did it and not said anything. <laughs> Blooper. I, Oops. I didn't realize that. <laughs> that, that, that would have missed out on an that. opportunity. I mean, this is a great, um, this is, I'm just really intense right now. Yeah. Like a movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's cool. Oh, gosh. Movies. Well, I'm just saying a lot of pain, suffering, deceit. Deceit? And, yeah. Decept- I mean, she was roofied, basically, is, is the suspicion. So there's the deception and the pain, suffering, followed by an unbelievable triumph and success. It's just a great story. It's been real. It's it's difficult for me to explain and put into words. Yeah. You know, I've grown so much as a person. Um, I like to say that relapse starts in your mind. It, it really mm-hmm. does. Uh, it starts with a thought pattern. It starts with selfishness. It starts laziness. With, yeah. All of that. It, it really All the does. negative stuff. I agree with you. And that's where it starts. And so, you know, anytime I find myself. Because healing isn't linear. It's not at all. Sometimes you'll find yourself regressing. And at times I've, you know, (laughs) now, now that I've had the experience of, you know, being in jail and going through all of that, it's like, I don't, I don't want to go back there. So I I adjust myself before I wreck myself now. And it, it starts with recognizing your own patterns and your own bullshit, really. It's kind of, kind of hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whenever things are going hard in my life, it's like, and, and I'm like, I, I, I go inward. That's yeah. what I do. You know, I go inward because like, I'm actually the only one that can cause me pain. You know, he could push, I can allow him to push my buttons or to, you know, hurt my feelings, mm-hmm. but that's me allowing that to happen. And then it's like, and mostly for me, if it, it would be stuff that would happen at home, right? Like mm-hmm. at home. And, and I'm like, because the people that are closest to you, they know how to push your buttons the best, right? <laughs> and I know how to allow them to. Yeah. to, to you've let them, you've opened up to them. They know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I get the most upset with myself, though, when I allow, when, when I'm like, I know what's going on here. Yeah. And, and, and then I, and then I lash out. Yeah. And, and that's when I get upset with myself. I'd be more concerned if you didn't actually lose your shit from time to time. <laughs> I'm serious. Like the people that can keep it together and like all stitched up all the time. Like you scare me. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. What kind of psychopath are you? All right. <laughs> Dang, am I, am I, am I like trying to become a psychopath? A little late, buddy. Like, a little late. <laughs> I, I think it's natural to a degree to go inward whenever you're, um, dealing with some kind of disturbance in your life or some kind of stress. But at the same time, I mean, you got to really think about all the connection that you're denying yourself as well. Like, are you actually going inward or are you just not communicating? Um, <laughs> that a question for me? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it, it depending on the mood you're in, it's kind of like that codependency. In a yeah. good relationship, it's not codependent. In an unhealthy relationship, it is codependent. Yeah. So in this situation, if you're in a good mood and you go inward, it's okay. But if you're in a kind of a bad mood, you go inward, you're kind of being a recluse. So there's there's a healthy balance. Yeah, it's there. it's yeah, it's a tough question depending on your mood. I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah. I usually just go hard all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, h- humans weren't meant to just sit inside of our heads all the time. No. We've got to have connection. We've got to have some kind of relationships with the people around us. Yeah, that's what happens to me sometimes. I'm like, damn it, I just had a human emotion. I just had a human emotion. That was rough. <laughs> <laughs> I used to run from emotion so much to to the bottle, to to anything that would take away what I was feeling that now... Whenever I I notice myself getting angry or I notice myself getting really depressed, like I will sit there and feel it. I will allow myself to feel it before like allowing myself to process. It's, it's totally different than it used to be. Yeah. That's what I think I mean by when I go inward, I'm okay. I'm okay feeling whatever I need to feel. The one feeling I still don't like is when I get angry because I allowed somebody to, to, push my buttons that's the one and and then if i lash out in anger and i 
push back and, and hurt their feelings, then I then I'm like really like Chad, come on, you've done more work than that. Yeah, but they started it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so I, bro, they started it. Fuck it. Or did that's I, a dangerous road to get started. Yeah. Or did I it's start true. it? Yeah. That's you true. never know. Passive aggressive attitude. It doesn't matter who yeah, started. Right. I would much rather somebody be aggressive with me than passive aggressive. Oh, for if you sure. look at me and say like, "Bless your heart," I'm gonna fucking slap you. <laughs> like, no. I've tried to cut a shirt sleeves off at least thirty fucking times. I have never done it properly, and you just cut those sleeves off like they were nothing. Oh, thank you for letting me yeah. jack up your shirt here. I mean, I've just yeah, never no got. I, it's she did a good job cutting it. Yeah, I've never cut good like that before. And I was watching when you were cutting it. It was kind of I thought it was going to be too big, but yeah. it was perfect because I tried to cut like just right here, and then it never works. <laughs> no, you got to go down the. Side you got to go down bit. the side. Yes, yeah. I just so yeah, I learned something. Not that I'm cutting anymore, but yeah. Well, you should start cutting your shirts, dude. So so when you go to the gym, you got like a sleeveless shirt on. I should. I what do you What do you wear to the gym? I wear um, tank top. No. Long sleeve? No, I wear sh- shirts like this. You wear a Solon shirt? No, to the I don't gym? wear a Solon shirt. I wear the <laughs> so, the single, the thin, thinner cotton. The thinner stuff. Yeah, Why usually show, show 20, off your... 22 veterans a day, usually that stuff. Show off your guns and yeah, stuff like that. Show off the pipes. There you go. Yeah. Really tight on the stomach. Show off the abs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then in there, I'll wipe my face with my shirt. I'll bring it up like this. I'll make sure. <laughs> then I'll stretch it out like this. Oh, and I'll turn it, and I'll then I'll try to get my back a little. You know, there you go. <laughs> make sure everyone get a peek. You know, and make a really loud noise. So yeah. Oh watch. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever actually been in a gym when somebody's working out and they're very loud with their set? Yeah, I don't like that. There's it's a, so uncomfortable. It's like, sir, can you please breathe a little? There's this guy at my gym. And I'll, someday someday he's going to watch this podcast, right? Because someday everybody's going to watch yeah. it and he's going to know I'm talking about yeah, For sure. And I, I like the guy. He's a really, he's a, I, I don't know him. Yeah. And like all we've done is say, because I'm like the guy in the gym with headphones on. I don't really talk to people that much. But, you know, so I, say, I, I always say what's up to people. Give him the head nod, but he goes every every even if he's like lifting like a ten pound weight, he goes uh, hip hip hip. Jesus, <laughs> he could be lifting ten or two hundred and fifty. It's the same he's thing. Hip hip. <laughs> How about the weight? It's bangers? loud. Huh? How about the bouncers? The the bangers are just they let it drop this far. Um, you know the legs and the clap clap. You know every three minutes you hear the the weights pounding. Like why? Like on the machine, or yeah, on the or machine. They drop it on the ground. No, on the machine, the ground. I don't mind. Yeah, I don't know. Like my 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 gym has like such brand new equipment. It doesn't really clank. Oh, it doesn't clank. No, yeah. it doesn't clank. Yeah. They got the good shit. Yeah, you got to go to Lifetime. Yeah, this is why I work out at home now. Just, <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I trained for Kilimanjaro all from home. I, I used Beach Body actually. It oh, I did Beach Body. Which one did you do? Uh, it was. I don't remember. I don't remember. I did, I did beach body. I know it was mine was uh, insanity. I did insanity for with uh, Kelly with my ex wife. At home. Yeah, we did it at home. Yes. I got I got trim and cut. I went, mm. from, I went from like one seventy eight to like one fifty two in a sixty day program. Wow. There you go. I was light, lean, and mean. Whoa. I was at my I was at my fighting weight. <laughs> 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 yeah, don't do that again. What? The, the thing, you know what I mean? Fighting? Yeah. That yeah, would be my fighting rate. I'd be like probably I'd I'd probably light, need lightweight. F- it'd be like 140 yeah. 140 something would be the appropriate uh I feel like I would crush the guys in that arena though. No. I don't know. They're pretty badass. They're pretty badass, bro. The shot could break a rib if you don't <laughs> lean into it properly. Yeah. You're fucked. Well, I mean, I'm I'm like 50. You'll be like, oh, now, get so you on a second. Give me 30 seconds. I'm here. not about to get in the ring at 50 years old. You really 50? Yeah. 49. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. Cool. How old are you? We're both the same as Chad. Him and I keep battling back and forth. One day I'm older, one day he's older. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you lie? Like, but what? <laughs> Your age. <laughs> <laughs> I just brushed it off. Like, it wasn't a lie. Like, like you look amazing for how. I just don't like are. to repeat it. Why? Because I just don't want to be it. I want to be forty-seven. You, you put me on the spot right off. The I'm how fifty-seven. Old are you? I'm fifty-six. Are you really? Yeah, I want to uh-uh. be forty-six though. 
He's 56. I don't want to be 56. No. Uh, I got like 25 good years left and that's it. <sighs> <sighs> Fucking power nap after that. <laughs> you know? Power nap. My yeah. dad's 80, 87. Yeah, I got no chance to get to 86, 87. He says he's got 20, 25 oh, years fuck. left. More than likely. He's driving his Porsche around, bro. You should see him. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, have you ever wow. seen Ernie on the road? Oh, I have. He leans into the turns, too. He's like, on a turn, he's like that. <laughs> Pretty gangster. Yeah. Right? You never know. My great grandmother is still alive. She's 104 now. Really? Damn. Yeah. yeah. His dad likes to nap at the red lights. The quick 20 second nap and he's back up at <laughs> green. He knows. You know what I mean? You get to that age, you got to sleep whenever you can. Uh, I'm already feeling it. Gosh, I went and did like 10 miles in my wheelchair the other day. Damn. And. Uh, I was just exploring Venice Beach and Santa Monica area, and goodness, I was like, I am not, I am not 26 anymore. Did you go to the um, Santa Monica Pier? No, not yet. Not yet? No. How long, how many more days are you here? Well, I was supposed to leave out on Sunday, but apparently L.A. has this random hurricane that's coming through. Oh, yeah. It is. So it's giving me an opportunity to stick in for a couple more days. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I'm okay with it. School starts next week, but I'm already a few weeks ahead in some of my classes, so. Oh, good. I'm excited. I'm ready to graduate, man. I'm so ready to graduate. It'll be. The uh, end of this year, or you have one more semester, or two more. At the end of this year, nice. yeah, and I'll get to graduate uh, right there at the base of Pikes Peak. Mm. So I'm, I'm just like, so excited for that that overwhelming feeling of relief of guess what i don't have to go to school anymore but i did it mm-hmm. i did that thing that i said i was going to do back in 2016 i finally got my bachelor's so I'm so when did you uh do kilimanjaro uh, i went out to kilimanjaro uh tanzania in 2021 uh, in june see i kind of have this The first time that I was going out to climb Pikes Peak, I was told that I couldn't go and climb the mountain by some very higher up people in Colorado Springs. And so I got really discouraged and kind of was like, okay, well, I guess I won't be able to do the mountain. And then the U.S. Forest Service sends me this message. And the only thing that the email said was birthdays are private events. Uh. And so I went and did Pikes Peak on my birthday and called it a private event, and that's how I was able to <laughs> raise money for charity while I was doing my ascent. And um, it kind of became a tradition to go and climb on my birthday. So uh, <laughs> we started on June 10th, uh, 2021, and it took us six days to get to the summit and two days to get back down. I was accompanied by a documentary team and Asante Tours, um, Really, really remarkable group of people. Uh, fantastic team. I was helped out by Julius John White in the treacherous areas, which is code for ants or <laughs> mud. Um, they got yeah. some badass ants out there. I, 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 ants. I, I was, we started in the rainforest <laughs> and I went right into a whole thicket of them Uh and I was swatting like all over my body. They were crawling all over. (laughs) (laughs) Like I I can deal with most things. Like I don't mind spiders anymore because like I crawl with them. They're just kind of like there, but I'm not a fan of ants, man. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not, especially fire ants. Those, those guys can, yeah, I got bit on the tush in oh. Colombia by a fire ant. And I was like, is yeah. this real right now? Yeah. When does it stop burning? Yeah. <laughs> Had a good time laughing at myself. It was okay. <laughs> but, uh, Kilimanjaro was remarkable. Uh, like I said, we started in the rainforest. And so I was literally swinging on my arms on the ground. And right above us were Columbus monkeys. And they're just kind of like, oh, what the heck That's is awesome. this? It was, it was, it was a dream come true. Um, you know, like I said, I, I spent 
a lot of time in the outdoors as a kid. And uh, Steve Irwin was one of my idols. And so I had this dream of just getting to go into the rainforest and getting to walk through the rainforest. And I got to climb through the rainforest. So it was just. Did you meet the Maasai? I did get to meet the Maasai. Yeah, it's awesome. They are. I, I can't even I can't even put a word to describe them, but they're truly the Tanzanian people are so kind. Yeah, and it was it was a culture shock for me because you know the most I knew I'd never been out of the country before, so I was just like I'm gonna go climb Kilimanjaro and this first time out of the country and everything else. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> terrified but um the culture shock because the most i knew of africa was those commercials you see where it's like the the poor children of, <coughs> yeah um it flies all over their face starving yeah, 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 yeah starving yeah. to death and i i didn't see that i i saw the exact opposite of that i saw people that didn't have much but what they did have was authentic happiness mm. i mean smiles everywhere you go these kids trying to sell you fruit just smiling from ear to ear happy and i mean i i it's something that you can't even really explain until you see it because uh, the children of africa are totally different than the children here in america uh, different pressures different aura altogether not worried about their cell phone? No. 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 <laughs> no. No. Uh, outside playing all the time, too. Yeah. And they, they, they just want to know about you. They'll come up and talk to you. And uh, I had a fantastic time there. I, I can't wait. I, I found out yesterday that I'm going to get to go back. Oh, and nice. And probably do it again. So I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> just because... Um, the experience the first time was so remarkable that um, I can't I can't wait for the next time. So, yeah. What was the shift? So you had the accident. You're lying in the hospital there. You're still kind of drinking. What oh, the shift. Yeah. Big shift. Yeah. Um. So I, <laughs> after losing my limbs, I went into a very dark period of depression. I gained over a hundred pounds and I basically looked like a rolling sack of potatoes. And one day I wasn't even healed yet, but I, um, my surgeon had allowed me to go home to kind of just have some home time. Cause I had been in the hospital for so long and my dad worked nights at the time and he woke up from work to go to work and he comes out of his bedroom and he just took one glance at me and he looked at me and he goes, you're a fat piece of shit that's never going to amount to anything. Mm. And um, I, I covered it up here but on my chest. I have tell me that I can't and I'll show you that I can because that that was the moment where my brain went. And something snapped inside mm. of me and. um. I don't know that I would have started climbing if I hadn't have had that experience. Like I, I, I kind of give my dad crap about it. I'm like, he, he told a, a limbless girl who hadn't even been healed yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he's fact. like, if I had not have told you that, where would you be? Yeah. Where would you be? And I think about that a lot. I think about that a lot because um, I, I was very much in the victim mindset back then, but that, was what made me switch out of that mind, my, that mindset. Mm. And I, you know, I started losing the weight. I got moved out to Colorado and I, I made something of myself. And so <laughs> the top of Pikes Peak, the very first time that I climbed it, um, my dad was there <coughs> and uh, I basically collapsed because I was so exhausted. And um, my dad was crying and he told me that he was so proud of me. And I hold that memory very dear to my heart because uh, 
<laughs> he could have been right. He could have been right. I could have been a fat piece of crap that never amounted to anything, but I decided to do something different. <laughs> it's kind of odd. <laughs> well, no, it's true because here's the thing. You see someone overweight, they're in a the chair, and you say, oh, you kind of make an excuse in your head already. You don't call them fat in your head because they're in a the chair, so you're feeling, you know what I mean? You're feeling yeah, sensitive you to begin with, so you don't want to say, hey, you're fat. You, you know, what are you going to do? So, I mean, yeah. David you know? Goggins would. Yeah, that's what I was thinking right away. <laughs> if you're fat, you probably are fat. If you're stupid, well, look in the fucking mirror. You know, but you fought through that, man. That was, that's huge. I don't know. Like, it takes a real special person to get, well, I mean, go through. I, I really stuck. wanted to prove my dad wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, I had a childhood that was rough because my dad's kind of rough. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he He's different. I'll put it that way. And um, I just, I am, I'm so grateful that he did. You know, I look at, as the, at the time I was, you know, I started crying and I was very upset and I didn't let him live it down. I still won't. I'm like, dad, you're still kind of a dick. A dick. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Even though I'm conquering shit and I'm badass, but yeah. I needed to prove yeah. it to myself too because I mean you, you're looking at the one woman in the world that's actually doing this. There might be a lot of other guys that are doing this, but that's predominantly veterans that have been blown yeah. up and go yes. out to climb, but um there's only one other woman in the world that's doing this, and she made it to the Everest Base Camp a month before I got to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Mm. And I hope to one day meet her, just because, like, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what really got me started in climbing. I don't know why I, <laughs> why I was so compelled to go do the incline to begin with, but... Um, uh, I think that it'll be remarkable to meet her and getting to see what her story is like and who inspired her. and Yeah. So maybe one day. And who inspired you? Who inspired me? Um, oh. I was still in the hospital, um, and it was the year 2015, but this guy named Kyle Maynard, he went and climbed Kilimanjaro, and I I remember watching that video while I was in the hospital before I'd ever thought about moving to Colorado, before I ever thought about climbing myself. Um, I think I was already looking for different ways to get back out into the woods because mushroom hunting and turkey hunting and all that stuff was really important to me back then. Mushroom hunting? Yeah, yes. it's a good sport. I'm <laughs> unfamiliar yes. with mushrooms. Yeah. Morel mushrooms. They're so delicious. I mean, you've probably had them. You just don't realize it. They're a delicacy. He doesn't take mushrooms anymore. Oh. He's sober. Well, <laughs> you can. St I, I, I'm sorry, but I firmly believe that you can still be sober and you can still do mushrooms. Um, oh, I agree. Uh, I know I have complex PTSD and I used to microdose. And it was a lot healthier for me than it was uh, going on. I had to put myself in rehab twice. Um, the first time was after I got out of the hospital. And it wasn't because I was addicted. Like, I didn't have a problem yeah, with the pills. The but here's though. the thing. I was on hydrocodone, oxycodone, yeah. oxycontin, yeah. Dilaudid, right. fentanyl. And all these dangerous drugs that you can't just wean yourself yeah. off of. And so I had to put myself in rehab. And my doctor called me. Um, I had gotten some routine blood work done. And she goes, how are you feeling? I'm like, I'm okay. She's like, oh, well, you got one or two options here. You can either go to rehab and get off of all of the narcotics that you're on. Or you've got about six months. Mm. And... Like, I was already turning jaundice, and so um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of no no-brainer <laughs> there. But um, I use medicinal marijuana. It helps me with phantom limb syndrome. Yeah. Um, it's quite painful, but, you know, people got to go with what works for them. And if pills work for you, that's great, but they don't work for me. If it's, um, is it, is it, I know they call it phantom, but is it phantom if the, um, the nerve ending still 
because they're still there, right? They yeah. just they stop at this point. Um, <laughs> so it, I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but whenever the train hit me, it didn't just slice off my legs; it smashed and ripped. Mm. And so I can still feel my toes. I can curl my toes. I can kind of move my ankles. Yeah. Um, and this is just all in my head. Like I can feel where my feet are right now. I can feel where my knees are. I just can't move them um, in my head. It, it's it's really strange. Um, almost constantly imagine, say you sit on your foot for an hour and it's really dead asleep. That yeah. feeling you get, that tightness and how um, it's almost like staticky. Yes. That's how it is constantly. Um, and then I also experienced sciatic shock where it, Literally, it feels like somebody just stuck a lightning bolt in the side of my leg, just all the way up my back sometimes. And so you'll see me, like, jerk or twitch around a little bit. But it's it's a whole different beast. I, I wonder, um, we had our friend Adolfo on yeah. the podcast, and he was in a car accident, and um, he's paraplegic. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I wonder what I, I just kind of wonder. Have you ever talked to somebody that with the, the with the difference between like being paraplegic and what happened to you? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, one of my very good friends, his name's Taylor Graham. Um, he came to the hospital almost every day just to kind of let me know that things were okay. And I had the, I had this moment in the hospital with him. I was crying about something. I was really upset and. Um, he came to visit me. He rolled in my room. He saw that I was crying. And he looked at me in the eyes and he goes, you're going to fucking walk again. And he rolled out of my room. And I, I, he'd never done anything like this before. Um, but it, it really, <coughs> it really made me grateful um, that I was amputated versus being paralyzed. Um, I, I was very lucky, very lucky that I even survived it at all. Oh, but yeah. <coughs> and, you know, I'm, I've, I'm I've talked to paraplegics. The difference between, yeah, I'm just now making the difference. In what that was a asked. powerful statement. Really that was a powerful. powerful statement that he said to you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, <coughs> he's, he's not. He's, he... Or did he? he? He can. He can. He can now. Um, they've got the body suits now that they can hook you up to and kind of um, it stimulates electromagnetic responses in your limbs and gets you walking. But he can with that. Um, but it was, it was an eye-opener to me because I was still so much in this very selfish bubble of, oh, my God, this happened to me. Wah, 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 wah. Instead of realizing, like, okay, this happened to you, but you're not paralyzed. You don't have additional weight on the ends of your limbs to carry around. Like, there's still options here. Um, And I'm so grateful that he did that because it really opened up my eyes, you know. I, I started being more open and receptive to asking people, like, how do you maneuver, um, how does this work for you? And it really illuminated um, different issues that we face. It's all similar, but it's definitely different. Wow. Just stories like this blow me away, bro. Yeah. You know, just uh, uh, because it's you're overcoming such a barrier. You know what I mean? It's just amazing. Well, it's, 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 not, it's the mindset for yeah. me. That is just so <coughs> phenomenal, you know, the, the mindset that, um, and the same thing with Adolfo, he, yeah. he talks about how, you know, he, he was, uh, in, a uh, self pity for a long time and he kept trying to do all of these, um, just little things because there was like these things he believed he was going to walk again. Yeah. Snake oil the, stuff. All, all the, yeah. Is what's what snake oil? Is snake that, oil so that's is like a, like a, like a, dis, a deception. Yeah. Yeah, it was, he even he tried like mag- magnets, yeah, the magnets, magnets under his bed. Yeah, everything. drinking potions and taking. Pills. So, anyways, this guy uh, became a professional bodybuilder. Yeah, 
That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. You know, and that's, that's a story of, of, of triumph, uh, after a tragedy. And I love, I love those kinds of stories. What any kind, um, your story is amazing. Like we, and, and I, th- and when I see you, like you, you take some pictures and you, you're just like, you look like a model. Oh, thank you. You know, when I go, <laughs> when I scroll through your Instagram, I'm like, you, you have some pretty dope pictures, uh, cow, cowgirl boots. Yeah. I, you know what, <laughs> man, people <laughs> laugh at me and have called me a poser and all kinds of other stuff. And it's really interesting. It's like, you didn't know me before I lost my limbs. Like I almost lost my entire identity. Like. Hunting was my thing. I have a turkey tattooed on my back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I have mushrooms tattooed on my back. Like, this was, this is how we fed our family yeah. in the Midwest, you know, yeah. going turkey and deer hunting and mushroom hunting. Uh, $90 a gallon for mushrooms? Yeah. Like, go and sell it to the local eateries and continue to forage for other things. Uh, it, it was just so ingrained in my identity that. I really thought that my life was over um, after I lost my limbs. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story uh, just to kind of lighten it up. But I'm uh, 21 years old, just lost my limbs. I'm, I'm in the hospital, and one of my friends had brought me up an iPad. And um, limbless 21-year-old Mandy gets this question inside of her head. She's like, what is my sex life going to be like? And so I took this iPad out after the nurses had left me alone, and my mother had went back down to Missouri. And I, you know, pulled up Pornhub, and I was <laughs> I was looking at amputee porn, uh-huh. and I pulled up this really high rated video, and I was like, okay, let's let's see what this is going to be like. And um, it was this girl and her boyfriend and. She's the amputee. She's an above, or she, excuse me, she's a baloney amputee. So imagine she's got limbs. <coughs> I, I've got the stumps, kind of, of, of the tree branch. And <laughs> anyway, they're getting it on, and I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, okay, like, maybe my life isn't over. And it was about that time, um, that I was feeling comfortable and like, okay, maybe I I won't die alone, that (laughs) he dropped his drawers and she lubed up her residual limb. And I won't go into (laughs) what happened next. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought this was going something else, bro. (laughs) Hang on a second. Yeah, she she totally got us right now. That was the hook right there. So, yeah, um, he he got limbed. 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 In the recto electo? It, yes. Wow. And that I was code for bum. Yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, little 20-year-old Mandy, uh, poor girl. Wow. She was so scarred. She <laughs> Anybody would be scarred. Forget poor little Mandy. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> I, I, I closed the iPad, threw it across the room, of and course. I cried myself to sleep and didn't have any kind of sexual encounters or allow myself any of that for a couple of years after amputation. <laughs> right? <laughs> I didn't think you were going, I so think you were going, going there either. Going down the list, eh? Limming? No. <laughs> Wow. I've never heard of that before. You know, it's not true. I had a guy in Lake Arrowhead. He lost his hand. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you a true story. stop there. Stop. We can we can all use our imagination from there. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have gone there, but I mean, like, can you imagine being 21 years old and going like, I wonder what my sex life is. Right, and pulling up that? Can you imagine? Well, no. because did you think that they were going to have regular sex? <laughs> yes. That was like, re- like, you know, like I did right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> I was, he I was, lubed, she lubed. I'm thinking to myself, why would she lube her limb? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, and then a second went by. I'm like, oh. Awkward. Oh. Wow. Yeah, just so you know, he's Canadian. So yeah. It takes, him it takes a little, me a minute. It's a little bit longer yeah. than okay. the average person to yeah. <laughs> figure shit out. Wow. Were my headphones sitting forward this whole time and I look like a dork? No. Wow. 
Oh. All right, who cares? I've never heard of that before ever. Who'd even search that? Let me. She didn't search that. No, no, she I know wanted, that. That's what I'm saying. No, no, that's what I mean. Like, is there even a category for that? Like, when you want to say, I want okay, to go home and search it right okay. now. I just want to be number, very... Like, what is it? 42? 46? If it exists, 46? Yeah. If or it no. exists, there's a porn of it. Oh, God, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Well, I didn't know that rule then. No, <laughs> I, I just learned that rule right now. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I, I, I've am i been... Uh, what do you call it? Ever since I got off the meth, I've been uh, um, off Pornhub. <laughs> no, <laughs> isolated. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Maybe I shouldn't have gone there. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. We're open to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now it's just gonna be awkward. God so Almighty! I just, you know what I mean. I just, <laughs> you know where, I've got so much to say right now. I've got so much to say right now. He was up there picturing that whole image. Yeah, and he was like, <laughs> "I'm wondering God. if you're gonna search this after." No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Don't. I might. I might just to get just a to just get to get a, a look. Just a look. Well, I want to know what he says, honey. Quick, lube it up. You know, like what did he say to her? How did they even start? He didn't say anything. I, I'm not kidding. Like whenever I say like it, it went from normal to not normal really fast, really fast. Can you I, on I'm this one when we're when you serious. before you put it out like right here? Can you put like you know Chad's Ready. mom please uh, turn it off at um, <laughs> turn, turn it off, turn it off turn it off at mile fast, number fifty fa fast yeah. fast forward five minutes. <laughs> We had a wow. funny ass podcast yesterday. Yeah, though, right? it like, was. It was. My mom's was. gonna be so. God, mad. can you imagine though? Like, here's where I'm going, honey. Take off your prosthetic. Uh, uh, you know, put it in and beat me with it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just it's crazy. God help us. Yeah. Wow. So, what's even worse than that is like there's wow. an entire community of people, um, and I didn't know this. I, I thought that I was out of the foot fetish realm. Yeah. No. Oh, there's a, yeah, there's, yeah, of course. Devotees. Of course. Like, I didn't know that oh, this course. was a, I didn't know that this was a thing. Oh, like, so they didn't have devotee? Game of Thrones before I went and got amputated. Of course. <laughs> 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 have you watched Game of Thrones to know what I'm talking about? We got the poster over there. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> She's naughty. <laughs> at least i'm real yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't want you to come in here and tell no us. this is awesome bro are you kidding me i'm having a blast right now holy smokes you gotta put a big r on this one there michelangelo sorry should we title it lemming <laughs> no, oh my God. i think they would call that like pegging right? pegging you're right peg legging god <laughs> <laughs> we could get uh, we could get calls from different groups, active <laughs> activist groups on this one. Oh my <laughs> you know? gosh! Excuse you might. me. You might. Wow, my ears are sore again. A lot of laughter today. We always ride right on the on the line on yeah. some of that stuff, but not not really though, because I feel like we're pretty appropriate. You know, well, she brought it up, not us. <laughs> well, I was just trying I was to make light gonna, of I, the situation because, like. <laughs> Starting to get a little quiet. Like, okay, I gotta drop something funny. That was, was that was that good. Was the best that, was, part. that was good. That's gonna go real. That's yeah, a real. It's that's, probably that's, gonna go viral. Yeah, that could. We're gonna. We're gonna. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our first real viral video. Not like my mom did it for me. <laughs> she completely cut me off. <laughs> no, we have a video that went like. Oh, it's like at one point seven or something. Yeah. Wow, oh, it's, it's close to two. Two million. Is it? Two million. That's awesome. It's the most, like, not thing you would think would go viral. This I would think would go viral, especially Shane's reaction to the whole fact that he was like, oh, <laughs> that's not where I thought we were going with yeah, this. Not at all. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. The light bulb reaction there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was good. That was great. Had you ever done that to people before? <laughs> I have I have stumped. No, no, no. He meant the reaction. No. Talking no. to people. Oh my god, Chad. What kind of fucking question was that, bro? No. Holy not that was over the line. We want to apologize not, for Chad right not now. What I Sorry. Was it's been a long couple of days and uh, No, have you ever told somebody the story like that 
and threw, completely threw everybody off like you did to us. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> <Not> my documentary <laughs> team. <laughs> my documentary because team was like, oh my gosh. Just imagine. <laughs> what if, if what if we just get out. ourselves into? Wow, right? <laughs> did you ever do that before? <laughs> That's not what I was talking God, about. God, bro. I was thinking, Good like, Lord. how dare you? It's like. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even ask that. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. But then I looked over and I said, no way those are going to fit anywhere. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking those are way too thick. Way too thick. I mean, I've seen some, sh I've seen some shit before. Though. Yeah, but. Oh my gosh. I come follow on. this EMT on Instagram and TikTok and um, he, he does <laughs> PSAs for people and it, Oh. Well, badge five hundred two or something like that. Yeah, his, you should look up his page. That's his handle. It's funny. Oh, really? Badge. Yeah, he sees like random things that people like do. See some kind of sexual annotation to, and then he's like, "No, don't let me meet you this way. Do not, <laughs> do, do not. <laughs> if I show up and you've got this stuck up somewhere, oh no God, right? Like, I'm gonna shake well, that's my hilarious. head. I've got this. I've got this." I'm about to see this because my my, my 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 mind turns everything into sex. Everything I could I could just like everything could, yeah. I could find some kind of sexual connotation in everything. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Wasn't it Freud I, that said that that was a standard thing for standard, men? Yeah. yeah, for men yeah. or just for people in general. I think it's for people in general. Yeah, that's good. I just don't usually like blurt it out. No. Oh well. Hi, I'm Mandy. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. the problem. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So after the two years of not not searching, you searched again, and tell us about that. <laughs> 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 wow! 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 Am I gonna get in trouble? Oh. <laughs> no. So this actually, th this experience is what inspired me to. Um, I came up with some really funny Tinder profiles that i went viral for um yeah you'll have to look that one up because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that or repeat that but um <laughs> <laughs> but i i wanted people to understand that um it's not as scary as the porn industry would like you to believe um and i, I wanted young girls to understand that one, you don't go to Pornhub for any kind of realistic expectation of what <laughs> your sex Nobody life is going to be like. Yeah. You will absolutely traumatize yourself. Yeah. Is that what my problem is? Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted people to know that it, it, it it's really not that complicated. You're still a human being. Um, there's still somebody out there for you. They might be over the fucking rainbow, but they're out there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and, and just disabled dating advocacy. Because uh, people don't really understand or know until they're shown. And so if you draw them a very vivid picture, they kind of get it. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I've come to know with communicating with men. But yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what inspired that. That's why I went and did that. He's looking at me like, you got to say it now. Say I, it. I found the profiles. Both of them? <laughs> I <laughs> found one of them. Throw them up. <coughs> you want me to throw it up? Oh, yeah. Is Are that okay? With that? Oh, gosh. Yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah, this is the relatively PG one. Oh, there's another one? Yeah, that's not even the full one, actually. That's the only one. Here. Oh, could you grab my phone for yeah. me? I'll pull it up. I think it was Board Panda that did an article of uh, the top 20 Tinder profiles for amputees, and I made two on the list. You made two? Nice. Yeah. Two spots, not number two. Yeah, that's what I, that's that's what like, I figured. What? One and number four, five. No. One and nine. You made one? Yeah. Nice. What kind of picture was that? Never mind. <laughs> it's a Tinder profile, so it's PG-13. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> my niece. No, no, I meant I meant what kind of picture that was that on um, 
the Tinder? number number one Tinder picture. Well, it's gonna be a PG because I I mean PG thirteen. I don't think you can put rated R pictures on there. Oh, I don't. You know, like you can search a lot of things and you can find a lot of things about me, but you won't find my bits anywhere on the internet. <laughs> 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 yeah. You might find mine. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So here is the first one. <laughs> Says uh, disclaimer: I don't have legs, but don't worry, I'm taking it in stride. Just roll with it, okay? <laughs> My life was a train wreck, literally hit by a fucking train. But here's some awesome benefits from it: I'll never run away from you. Front row parking, <clears throat> and the bottom of it said, "I have similar functionalities to a vacuum. I come on wheels and I suck." <laughs> just, just trying to make I like people her. laugh. Yeah, man. yeah. Got a great sense of humor. You, got, you have to. If you don't have a sense of humor, you're not going to make it through. And the second one, the picture um, <laughs> felt cute. Might roll over your toes later. I don't know. <clears throat> um, said, I'm back to tender, bitches. Still ain't got no legs. Still got a golden sense of humor, but still ain't got a boyfriend. Tried dating a blind guy for a while, but he couldn't see what was in front of him. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky, I'll show you the real definition of sit and spin. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll even let you refer to me as your meal on wheels. Wow. Oh, my God. This I never thought of this kind of stuff. <laughs> Seriously, I don't go there. Drawing a very vivid picture. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not going to repeat that one because I'm just not going to. Okay. <laughs> I don't see how it could get worse. If this concept's too hard to grasp, your dick probably is too. Ooh. Ooh. Sassy. Yeah, really yeah. sassy. I just wanted to make people laugh, you yeah. know, and understand that, like, just because I don't have legs doesn't mean I'm not a human being that is capable of whatever I want to do. Yeah. So. For sure. Unfortunately, a lot of people see disabled people and they're like, mm, I'm not dating that. Like, it's too much. You choose you too much. Do you want somebody that dresses in Prada and it's very high maintenance that way? So, you know, everybody's got their thing. I'm kind of normal no matter what. Like, even when you were coming in, I just, I try to be normal. You know, I, I, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. For me, anyways. You know. I just love people. People. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to get to know different people. Like, I, I really enjoy getting to know people on, you know, more than just the surface level. And I think that I tend to inspire conversations that lead it beyond <laughs> just the surface level. <laughs> and, and it's kind of hard to talk about surface level stuff whenever you, you've seen and done some of the stuff that I've done. So, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're very um, tough, tough, uh, I really like you a lot. Well, thank you. I'm really grateful that you guys had me on today and, and got me down to Dana Point, so I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, when Chad said you're coming and you're going to be in the chair, I instantly thought, why is she not going to wear her legs? I am not wearing my legs right now because I have gotten a little fat. No. <laughs> I have Did taken you <laughs> fat. Yeah, yeah. You don't look fat. <laughs> no, I don't. But it, it does matter quite a bit whenever. Excuse me. Whenever you're in prosthesis, especially as a woman, um, your weight tends to fluctuate more than a male, and so I have to get fitted more often. And I've just happened to come across this time in my life where, <clears throat> um, this entire year I haven't done anything in the media. I haven't done a single interview. This is the very first anything I've done this year. Um, and that was a personal choice just because I needed a little bit of a break before I got um, what's coming up next. And I can't talk about what that is. I thought so you were going to I thought you were going to tell us. I I can <laughs> when we're not recording. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I I just it's so intense when I go into training mode that I put on blinders to everything else. Mm -hmm. And I really needed to let those walls down for a while and just exist as a human being. 
um, you know, outside of media, outside of social media even, <clears throat> I found that um, in my break from social media, like, I totally deleted my Facebook, which was kind of dumb. Like, I had 10,000 natural followers on it or whatever. I don't care anymore. But um, I've come to learn that we're, like, massively overconnected. And people seem to have this sense of entitlement to know where you're at, what you're doing, what you're doing with your life at all times. And it's almost dehumanizing. And so I just took the year off to kind of be me and, like, eat what I want to, lots of chocolate before bed. And um, I'm grateful because now I have to get back into training mode. And, yeah. But prosthetics, I can't wear them right now because my – <laughs> my, my stumps have gotten a little bit larger with the body weight fluctuation. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's in the works, though. Um, I get fitted down at Prosthetic and Orthotics Association down in Orlando, Florida, thanks to a charity called 50 Legs. Um, Steve Chamberlain, he's an ex-pro wrestler. He is the founder of that charity, and he is just top-notch individual, really. I mean, he helps not just me, but so many other amputees, kids, um, families <coughs> regain their um, mobility. And it's something that you don't really think about it being as important as it is until you're in that position. I love my legs, though. They're cool. Sometimes they're not. They don't operate in the way I want them to. You know, because, like, you can't just think, like, bend the knee. Yeah. There's certain actions you have to go through. Weight in the head or whatever, you got to get it, yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that <coughs> was quite the learning curve all on its own, but. Yeah, it's 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 definitely got to be much harder with, um, with two than just one. That, <coughs> let me tell you something, like. I wouldn't ever kill somebody, but would I take one of their legs? Yeah. <laughs> just one. one just for, one. For yourself. It makes things so much easier. Uh, mm. I, I get a little envious of people that still have both or at least one of their legs. Because it's like, if I had just one knee, my life would be totally different. But I don't. So I just kind of make do with what I got. Even just one knee? Like if it was down to... Mm -hmm. Here, yep. It would make a world <coughs> of difference in your life. A world of difference. I wouldn't fall as often. I fall a lot. You do. Yeah. And um, with the climbing, it's always something that I've got to think about because if I fall and break my wrist, I can't climb anymore. And so, in periods of my life where I've done climbing, I kind of have to put the prosthetics on the back burner and. Um, <coughs> it's not really been fair to um, the people that helped me get fitted uh, to have to continue to pay for me to get fitted around my, my nonsense with climbing. And so what I try to do is I just try to <laughs> stick with the same set that I got because they're fantastic and just lose the weight and adjust my body around the limbs because – it's a lot less expensive to do that than it is to go get fitted. Mm. Well, and just like a boxer, like any athlete, you have a climbing weight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have your climbing weight. So you got to get back there no matter what. Yep. That's your life. Yep. Yeah. So you're pushing, you're pinning yourself in a corner for a specific reason. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a balance. Yeah. That's why this year I've kind of just taken it off to not have to worry about what weight I'm currently at and not be so focused on trivial things that um, most people it doesn't matter, but to me it means a lot because an extra 20, weight, 20 pounds of weight on a mountain is yeah. you know, potentially yes or no yeah. as to whether or not you're going to make it to the summit. So. Because it's not just 
crawling. You're, I'm literally lifting my body weight That's what over I'm and over and over and over and over and over again. So 20 pounds can make all the difference. Yeah. So that's why you have such nice shoulders, though, and triceps. I haven't been trying, so. <laughs> I look at this and I'm like, you know that um, <coughs> Cards Against Humanity card that says Rush Limbaugh's soft, shitty body? No. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I look at this and I'm like, this is. This is not the climbing Mandy I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> My head automatically goes to that card. That's funny. Yeah. I do that. Like we were going to go do this cold plunge. Like how, how long ago was that? A, couple a month. Of, a month ago already? Yeah. A month? It's been about three weeks. So I like, I trained for the cold, cold plunge because like I thought they were going to put me on camera with no shirt on. So I trained and I trimmed down to... <laughs> Like 178, and I was ready for the cold plunge. And then the cold plunge didn't happen. No. So immediately after the cold plunge didn't happen, I was like, fuck this, dude. I'm going back to like eating normal again. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back up to like, I'm already like back to one, like close to 190. God. I, I, went, I went from 178 to 185 in three days. My friend that did a bodybuilding show, granted, he was probably taking uh oh for dr sure <laughs> drugs but um he went from his bodybuilding weight and by the time i so he had his show was on saturday and i, w I was like watching his meal is it because he, he, he won he did great he got he, he got first place the, the, remember the guy that was oh no mind you weren't here <laughs> i had peter co-hosting that one but he went from that and he gained 25 pounds in two days two days with bodybuilding and you're doing a show, you got you, they drain all the water out of themselves too. Mm -hmm. So you're talking 10, 12 pounds of water yeah. weight. Yeah. And then just all the other stuff just blows up real quick when you put food and salt and all that wonderful stuff that we eat back in our bodies yeah. that, that they're not eating to get down to uh, like 3%, 4% body fat. See, I love being out on the mountain though. Because then, then that's when I can eat. That's when I can eat like like a hog. Yeah. <laughs> so right. <laughs> it's like all right, I've gotten cut down to the weight I need to. Now I need caloric intake, and I I will eat eat eat. Well, it's so it's so very impressive that you do that. Thank you. Like I I don't even <laughs> I'm not even sure I can do it. Can you right now? Um, I don't have passion or the will to do that right now you know what i'm saying but if i was in her situation and things were kind of dark fuck yeah fuck yeah that's where i thrive and that's your personality is when your cards are down you thrive yeah you know well, well, you're the same way bro yeah you're the same way so yeah you fucking not now because we're full-bodied so we're kind of lazy we're making excuses doing other stuff she doesn't have time for excuses right now this is it no. this is it Oh my gosh! But before I um when when you were gonna come onto the podcast and then you were like oh I you know I'm gonna get give it give it some time and you kind of just like talked about that like where you just wanted to take some time because we've been talking for a couple months yeah um and you took some time um just to get your mind mind right tell us about that um. I've been kind of dealing with some health issues on my own, um, but uh, I'm working through that. Really, my decision to step away from media and everything that I was doing, um, <laughs> as sad as it might sound, is, is because of an ex-boyfriend. Um, he said one sentence to me, and he said, Life-proof bionic woman is a public figure, and so therefore it's not stalking. And so I stopped doing everything. I changed my whole brand name. I just kind of put up my walls, and I was like, okay, come looking for me now. <laughs> so. so that was an ex-boyfriend said that to you? Yeah. He was your ex at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had asked 
repeatedly asked him to leave me alone and um, kept being met with that kind of answer. So mm. it's just like, all right. And it, it, it He said Bionic Woman? Yeah, Life Proof Bionic Woman was my tag name, my oh. brand name. Okay. What I've been climbing under. Um, and it is what it is because it's not really the brand name that has propelled my story. It's It's been me meeting with people like you and talking about it. Yeah. So. Well, I'm super stoked that you came on our podcast today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any more questions for her? I could go on for another couple of hours, bro. I Yeah, I want to know what that first day was when she got hit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you, were you awake? Were you, I mean, I could go on. I got a thousand, like, yeah, I got a thousand questions, but I, I mean, you know, whatever. You're, you're welcome to ask. Yeah, so you got hit. Were you awake? How was that feeling? Like, um, I was put into a medically induced coma. For the first several days yeah. because they could not get me stabilized. Mm. Um, I had to have, I basically emptied the blood bank there. I had to have so many transfusions. Wow. And my mother will tell this story quite often, but she knew that I was going to be okay because on day three of in this coma, they would mess with me, kind of like poke at me. Yeah. <coughs> Anything that they could do to get me to respond, lift a finger up move my eyelashes, anything. And um, the third day I wasn't responding at all, at all. And it freaked my dad out. It freaked my mom out and um, my cousin who was there as well. And so they just they just really double-timed messing with me. And I guess through my coma and being intubated while this was happening, I turned my head over to my mother and mouthed, Mm. And she knew I was going to be okay then. Um, after waking up, waking up was absolutely horrifying for me. I was terrified. I had no idea what had happened. I was still intubated, so I couldn't really breathe. And they had me on twice the sedative load that's legally allowed. I wasn't supposed to wake up, but I did. And I was very frantic trying to rip this intubation tube out. And um, <coughs> they um, eventually tied me to the bed because I was not cooperating mm. at all. And um, they finally brought me a piece of paper and a, a pen. And I wrote down accident question mark, question mark, question mark, did I trip, question mark, question mark, did I fall, because I still didn't know, mm. and then they informed me that I had been struck by a locomotive, and I remember looking up at my dad, and my dad and I have this special relationship, like we were pretty close when I was growing up, um, despite having, you know, typical issues with families. But <coughs> I remember looking up at my dad, and he was so pale white. And when I was a little kid, um, one thing that we used to do is we used to lay on the living room floor, and we would watch Forrest Gump. And I wanted more than anything to let my dad know that I was going to be okay. And so on this piece of paper, I wrote down Lieutenant Dan. Mm. Because I was trying to make him laugh or smile. I was trying to smile with this intubation tube still in. Because he was, he was like white, green. I'd never seen my dad this color. And um, my, my mom was like, she brought over a couple people to my bed thinking that I was asking for them. And I was like, no. Pointed at Lieutenant Dan again. And I looked up at my dad and tried to smile with this intubation tube still in my mouth. And my mom goes, Clayton, she's she's not talking about anybody here. She's talking about Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. And I, like, nodded my head and tried to laugh. And I, remember, I don't know what happened next, but my dad, he he 
went over to the side of the room, threw up, and basically walked out. I didn't know how I was going to get through this, but I knew that I had to do something. And so I've always used humor as a, a coping mechanism for the stuff that I've gone through. And I really believe that if I had not seen the character, Lieutenant Dan, go through his <laughs> um, trials and tribulations, not only with, with his um, amputations, to the character, but um, his issues with alcoholism. I don't know that I would have been as successful as I have been. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of an odd. Yeah, no one gets hit by a train and really survives. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's few. There are few, few and far fucking between, man. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe that I was the only girl hit purposely either so. did you um what happened to the guy that we were dating that the, the date i was being checked in for an emergency surgery that november shortly after my mother and i tried to reopen the investigation and i got a phone call from one of our mutual friends and she was frantic and crying and she told me that he was dead that he had shot himself I spent a year believing that until I later learned that he was a heavy equipment operator who the coroner ruled accidentally asphyxiated inside of a garage by carbon monoxide poisoning. So, is he the culprit? I can't say anything, you know. It's America. Um, innocent until proven guilty. I do know that he didn't act alone. The train conductor spotted two or three other people running away from my body. So. Hmm. Well, you're here chilling with the Hopeaholics now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on Fucking a, a. On a way better note. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love your story. What a roller coaster fucking ride I had today. Up and down, happy, sad, crying, inside, fucking smiling. What a great afternoon. Holy fuck. Yeah, it reminds me of that uh, speech by, um, I forget what, who it is. It's a, they, they, they always play it at the ESPYs. Um, bec- uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a speech um, about cancer survivors and donating to the, the Gary V. Foundation, or mm-hmm. whatever it is, v Found, the V Foundation. He has this, uh, uh, he talks about um, a good day is if you laugh, if you cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something else I can't remember it exactly, but that is a good day. It's a great day when you get to have all those emotions. Yeah, finished off with a uh, definitely shows you you're alive. Yeah, it does, <laughs> and then finish that out off with next for Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> hey. yeah, you, you even gave us some Netflix and chill. Yeah, baby, she did. She uh, yeah. threw us for a loop. Yeah, too. A really big loop. <laughs> threw us for keep it keep it interesting, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> keep it real. Keep it real, he's real. Never, he's never gonna forget this. I, f- I have a feeling he's gonna go look it up. I'm, 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 I'm gonna definitely mention it to my wife, and I'm gonna look at it. Yeah, I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> you know, no choice. I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> okay, you know, maybe I won't. Then. God it could ruin me. I know you're already fucking done. <laughs> 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 you're, <like laughs> oh, you're already fuck. done. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. This fucking guy, you know. Wow. Can you believe that, like, off air, we don't even like each other? Yeah, we barely talk. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He's an idiot. I've asked him on <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked him on a date a few times. He keeps fucking saying no. You know? Then I then I say, well, let's bring the wives. No. All right, how about let's, then yesterday he took his daughter out, right, for dinner. I said, okay, maybe I'll see you there. He's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, tonight he's taking his son out. I might just show up at the other masters. I don't know yet. I keep going to places where if you don't have a reservation, <laughs> you're not getting in. <laughs> <laughs> I could just show up and say, I'm with those two over there. <laughs> really mean, make it fucking it was awkward. Like last night, if you'd have done that, I've been so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. I took no my, fucking boundaries I, at I, all. I took my daughter out on her very first like daddy daughter date. Right, she's mm-hmm. fifteen, Aww. and I was trying to just show her how like a gentleman is supposed to 
treated a lady. And it was nice. Um, <laughs> but if I was out like with my daughter and he showed up, I'd be like, I would not, can you imagine? With a, <laughs> hey, Chad, <laughs> can we join you? Now you got to do it just so I can see the reaction. <laughs> oh, man. You better bring Michael Angelo or some type of camera, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. Astros, yeah. Well, yeah. damn. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. This was it. amazing. Yeah, Fucking you. great. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. this a lot. You're an amazing woman. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank we you. think so. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing. Yeah. And I love the name too. Hopeaholics. That's yeah, we're getting a lot of like a lot of like people are like hope the hopeaholics, man. Like that's a badass name. Badass. I got like a, I got like it a, really is a, D, yeah. a DM. It was just like it's one one of the, another one of those God things though. You know, like it just was like bam, just hit me because my and I stole it. I stole the Hopeaholics from from uh, my ex wife. Yeah, she had put it on a sweatshirt because she's part of my Hope by the Sea. And every year we do Got Hope sweatshirts. And one year mm -hmm. she was like, I'm tired of doing Got Hope every year. And she was like, How about we put like the Hopeaholics on it? I was like, Yeah, that's cool. And then fast forward 10 years, um, I was trying to come up with the name for the podcast. And my current wife was like, how about a dictionary? And I thought that was really cool. And that was the one I was going after. But of course, it was already taken. Mm. And um, the Hopeaholics was not taken. Can you believe that? No. Like nobody in the world had taken the Hopeaholics. Weird. Yeah. It's meant to name. be. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those God things. Yeah. yeah. So super stoked on that, and we get a lot of compliments on the name. Um, we can talk about the logo if you no want. Point. Or <laughs> okay. Well, now I gotta know what the beef behind the logo is. Well, no beef here. <laughs> no, we're fine with the logo. Logo's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very debonair, the guy with the beard there. <laughs> 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 you don't want to tell her. You don't want to tell, tell her. her. Yeah, go tell ahead. Her. Just a threat. Idle, <laughs> idle, idle <laughs> threats. I call these idle threats. I he says that if we get into an argument, he just has to take the beard off. That's not what I said. Just I said if we get a, if you ever piss me off and I and I decide to get rid of you, it's just me with beard with a beard and without a beard. Yeah. He's gonna mid make his middle name Shane, Chad <laughs> Shane Carlson. <laughs> you guys want to know what my middle name is? Uh, I know what it is. You do? Yeah, it's something funny. <laughs> Why would you say I'm that? I'm just saying it's Nobody's something. Nobody's name is funny. I never meant funny. I meant like. Um, they just, you know, it just it just reinforces what I told my son this morning. Like Carlson or something. Uh, Carlton or. Um, Carlton is the black guy from Fresh Prince. Right. Yeah, I was like. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> You're good. What's your middle name? Humphrey? Elvis. Elvis, that's right. No, that's really? Not, that's right. I, if I don't, no. I'd be proud. If my middle name was Elvis, I would be proud. And I'm not like not proud, Dad. Okay. <laughs> I know that it's your name. Is your middle name Ernie? Ernest. Really? Oh, that's I knew it was something <laughs> okay. like Carlton. Yeah. I told when, you. Whenever I was Ernest. A, whenever I was a kid in elementary school and, and Ernest. You know, I like you always like, what's your middle name? Oh, I never wanted to tell anybody yeah. my middle name. And then when I would finally tell my friends my middle name, they'd be like, Ernest. Ernest. Because <laughs> like at the <laughs> it's time, true. at the time there was these movies called Ernest Goes to Camp. Yes. And it was this dorky guy. Yeah. And so Yeah. My friends would all point and laugh at Ernest. Me. Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My poor dad, though. You want to know what his name is? Hmm. Ernest Norman. Norman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so wow. Those are really good, strong Canadian names. They are. They? Yeah. Oh, Barn Ernest, barnyard names. names. Ernest Norman. Yeah. My dad's middle name's Eugene, and he hates it. Yeah. But I don't know. I hate my last name. It's, it's always interesting. It's Horvath. And so whenever you go to call like customer service, and I've definitely had this, it's like, I'm really sorry, but did you say whore bath? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't just What's your like last it. name? Horvath. Horvath. What's yeah. your first name? Mandy. Mandy. Yeah. Okay, I was just thinking, you know, when you call someone, you go ask for someone. <laughs> Ima, is Ima there? What's her last name? Horvath. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's all. I was just trying to put one on one together here, but it didn't go. It it, it went. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty clever. I, I'm a, but I'm is not a real word. I'm a. That's not a, that's not a name. It could be a name. I'm a. No, it's not. What else? Yeah. I'm a. My, my great grandmother's best friend. Her name is. I'm your a. your great grandma's best friend's yeah. sister's dog boyfriend's dog's name was. I'm a. I'm a. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ima and Isla. Well, Isla. Just Isla. like my, just like my my aunts. I had Aunt Viola, <laughs> Viola, <laughs> and Aunt Iola. Really? Remember that? No. We talked about this. Yes, on the podcast we, yes, before. I remember barely. I, I, they were twins. Yeah, Iola and Viola. Iola and Viola. Yeah. I was just, I, every time you say that, I think Ariola. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of like a- aioli. Aioli. That's yeah, a good like, restaurant. I didn't know. Yeah, it's a restaurant, aioli. What is an aioli? An aioli? It's like a, a mayonnaise. Yeah, aioli. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't. I I do eat that. I've I've had a green. <laughs> I do yesterday. Eat, I I do eat that. Yeah, aioli. I had, I had green. green. <laughs> <laughs> I had green yesterday. Are you hearing this shit? God. Like, are you hearing what, what I'm hearing? Like, are put you your headphones back on. <laughs> are you having a stroke? <laughs> oh, ding. <laughs> I got to call 911 right now. Can you imagine if I was <laughs> having like, a stroke? Well, do, do you guys remember that lady that was like, she was a, a, a news broadcaster? Oh, yeah, she, she just a, killed over. She had a stroke right in the middle, and she was like, she was like doing her spiel. And oh, that did, one. Yeah, and she just started like going <laughs> i mean i don't know exactly what it was it no was no but i remember that one yeah, yeah the yeah. poor lady had a stroke yeah. on air yeah yeah recording with you no 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 with not, us. Not with us. no with us no no Sleep. we're not that cool no we're not that cool goodness at some point we i feel like some point we both actually here's the thing <laughs> At some point, we're going to have a stork on our own show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not gonna, that part. No. What part, bro? I was going to say, we'll never be that cool. But then I was like, yes, we will. And then I was like, no, we won't. Like, you can't take two nerdy, fucking dorky, like, middle-aged men and, and make them cool. Sure you can. No, you can't. We're on our way. <laughs> you can't. We are on our not way. Possible. No, you don't think? No. All right. You can do it. I can. You believe in you, be- <laughs> you believe in him. <laughs> 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 he was the guy that just said, I eat that. <laughs> it is great. <laughs> oh wow, my ears are really sore right now from smiling. From smiling. My my cheeks are hurting. Yeah, my it's cheeks good. are sore too. Yeah, it's it all time. started with your. They were uh, hurting from something else. I'd be curious. Yeah, what. right. Yeah, thighs. <laughs> it, it all started. It all. Right. It, it all started with your Pornhub story. Yeah, I was like really intent on this Pornhub story. I was like sitting here. Yeah. Just made and me then, think. Like, and then he's, and then she's. I like, have a really bad problem anytime I see somebody <laughs> with gauged ears, because I go back to that episode of Family Guy where it's like ear sex. Ear sex. <laughs> ear sex. <laughs> wow. So I, yeah, if you ever want to know what I'm thinking about looking at somebody's gauged earlobes, I'm like. You're just staring at him. She's like. That's funny. I never thought of that before. That's funny. Someone <laughs> did mention that to me. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not so alone in that. No, it's a yeah, comedy is a good. It's good for you. I thought you were gonna say it's a thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we sex, actually we actually do that. Thing. Don't worry, that I'm gonna <laughs> look up. We actually do that. <laughs> that I'm gonna look up. <laughs> yeah, I will. If it exists, there's a porn of it. The, Don't look. That exists. Your sex. I'm, I'm not looking that up. Oh, that yeah. exists for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. My days of porn having are over. Are over. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you after that one. <laughs> she was just going to look up my regular old, <laughs> regular old sex. Yeah, right. <laughs> he didn't know I what she was getting into. I didn't. I didn't sign up for. How that. far in was it? No, never no. mind. Forget it. It wasn't even. Forget. How far, is, how far <laughs> in did you get she before turned, the limb went in? She turned off before that happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, but it wasn't very long. It was just. Thank you for coming. So we're gonna do a picture.